Warning, some of this video may not be suitable for a younger audience. Parental discretion is advised. Also, this video is sponsored by Raycon, you goobies. Hi, I'm Bob Rydirik. And besides having a dirty shirt because it hasn't been washed in the past three days, and or dirty hair because it also hasn't been washed, I am quarantining in my house just like everyone else, trying to pass the time doing things that I'm sure everyone else is also doing. But even those things have become tedious, so I've decided to actually use my time to be creative, also maybe even do a little recycling in the process. So I've been thinking, what do I have an abundance of that I can turn into art? Cardboard boxes. A lot of them from Amazon. And Amazon likes to do this thing, you know, you'll order a print cartridge, and they'll put that inside a box. Then they'll put that box inside a much bigger box. It's not at all wasteful. And it's great, because I end up with all this cardboard that I can turn into art. Sarcasm. And not just art but turn them into the coronavirus. So let's go in the garage and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me move my whip. Okay, you can see here, here's the problem. Lots of boxes, whatever. It's got a lot of cellulose fibers in it. The same stuff that is used to make trees. <laughs> Sorry, I was having a flashback to my glue eating days. We're gonna take these, I'm gonna show you what to do in order to turn this into So, it's like two days later. Because I've been procrastinating. So, we're doing papier-mâché, and the way we're gonna do that, starting off, I went ahead and cut up all of the cardboard boxes into tiny bits. So, oh yeah, what we're gonna need to make this is cardboard, a ball, we're gonna need some newspaper, some glue, a bowl, stove. The first thing we need to do is, we need to tear apart all the fibers, and the easiest way I've found to do that is to just put it in a big pot of really hot water. Wow, I made a lot. <laughs> Quit playing with your dinghy. This is like a cooking show, but the results will turn out to be less delicious. By the way, I've gained some, uh, I've had some gains. <laughs> My family's like, stop using tobacco, it's gonna kill you. Well, now I'm gonna die of heart disease and obesity. <laughs> Let it kind of cook and get mushy. I don't know what I'm doing. Next step, we're gonna take some news papier. We're gonna shred it into strips. <laughs> and we're back. I prepared this water earlier. All we're gonna do now is add some glue. That smells delicious. I don't know how much, about that much. And I think I've made way too much of this. I'll add it to my coffee tomorrow. <laughs> Here's one of my balls. First thing we're gonna do is take our strip and you're just going to run each one through the glue mixture and then kind of squeegee off some, so it's not quite as juicy. And then we're just gonna go around. Oh. Just keep rapid doing it around. Don't be shy. You tell that newspaper who's boss. Just put the strips anywhere they need to be. Happy little strips. We're almost done. Actually, no, we're not. <laughs> and we're back. You can see I've covered my ball with paper. Let it start drying, and we're gonna go ahead and take a, a, a look at our delicious cardboard stew. Man, that is looking so good. This is probably good, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that off. By the way, how's my hair look? Is it, uh, is it okay, Nicole? I can't, I can't see it. You look hot. Thanks. <laughs> so I'll see you in a second once that's cooled down. Now that our ball is completely dry, we have to get the old ball that was inside of it out. And the way we're gonna do that is, I'm gonna use my rotary cava. Maybe, is this a good idea? We're just gonna assume that will not fall. Let's pick here, just a little square window. That should be big enough. Famous last word. Or is that what she said? Now, we're gonna just carefully peel this back. So, let me get the ball. Let it give birth. Ew! That looks unhealthy. Almost, 
almost. And, oh, it's a girl. While we have this open, this would be a great time if you're gonna turn this into a pinata to add the candy. And we're going to use this mosquito repellent bracelet. It's a Bugables. Aww. And that will represent the RNA that the virus tries to then get your cells to reproduce. I, I'm not very good at explaining that, but. It's like a citronella times a thousand. Ooh. So there's the coiled RNA strand just for accuracy. Then we're gonna close that up. I love old masking tape. Sarcasm. And once we get that all taped up, we're gonna put another layer of disgusting newspaper glue on it, then throw it in the oven for a couple hours at 180 degrees. Okay, now that we've done that, first thing we gotta do is... Now we're gonna take our delicious looking stew. That looks disgusting. Mmm. Then we're gonna get our fruit, our blender. <laughs> and we're gonna get that all nice and blended up to the consistency of a turd smoothie. Oh. Oh, that's nice. That's very juicy. Let's do a little ASMR. Get a close up. <laughs> I promise you'll have just as much fun as I'm having if you do this. It's, it's like getting to play with poop, but it's not poop and it doesn't stink. There's a reason we're making this. Normally paper mache is made, you know, with newspaper or other stuff, but uh, the cardboard gives us a unique ability to make something that I like to call paper mush clay. It actually has a very clay-like consistency when you make it like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wring out all the water or a good bit of the water. Then we're gonna mix in a bunch of the, the white glue and then it will turn this mushy, disgusting, poo-poo looking stuff into a workable, sculptable clay, sort of, made out of paper. So the next thing we're gonna do are to create the things that give the coronavirus the corona part of its name. Everyone's seen this picture. This is what we're going to make. This this is the coronavirus. And those doohickeys, those weird triangular spiky things, those are called spike glycoproteins, and those are very, very bad boys. Um, you know, instead of me try to explain what the coronavirus is and what it does, let me let someone who's a little more qualified, you know him, you love him. He's our favorite package thief stopping, Orbeez swimming pool filling, elephant toothpaste making, former NASA engineer, Mr. Mark Rober. Yeah. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, hey. Yeah, you're on. Hey, Bobby. So the coronavirus is a bit of a misnomer as it's neither a corona or a virus. It's actually a small organism created in a lab by the United States government meant to be spread via 5G cell towers strapped to the back of dolphins in the Venice Canal. What are you doing? What's that? That is not true at all. <laughs> no, it's definitely true. No, no, it's not. This was just a random mutation that happened just by accident. It happens all the time with viruses. I don't know how to say this, but uh, I worked for NASA, so I think I should know. Yes, we know. You can't just buy this shirt. Bro, come, bro. <laughs> so you're telling me Dr. Vucci knows more than my uncle's Facebook page? Uh... <laughs> I'll prove it, let me see that. Welcome back to News News, I'm Fab, and this is definitely not my garage. Fab, this just in. Apparently Dr. Fossey does know more than your uncle's Facebook page, and if you believe huh. what you read online more than what doctors are saying, you're an idiot. You don't say. Back to you, Chavez. Whew. So apparently it is a virus, but what you should know about viruses is they're just a bit of genetic code encased in a shell of fat. They're really simple and their only goal is just to make copies of themselves. And since they are way too simple and lame to do that themselves, they find a healthy cell and then trick it to make a ton of copies for them. And then all those copies find cells to infect and then things get out of hand real fast. And the reason washing your hands is so important is because the soap breaks down that fatty shell and easily destroys any trace of the virus on your hands. Back to you, Bobby. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate that. 
Okay, now let's get back to the important thing, making coronavirus in my kitchen. Now we're gonna go ahead and make all these stupid virus parts. First take a globe, smoosh it into a mushroom shape, then form the end into a triangle, then use your butter knife to go ahead and add some cute little designs in the top. The reason they're there is completely unknown to me, but they do have a certain aesthetic. Then we're going to make about 30 billion of each of them. Wow, so much fun. And now a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of being bored while you untangle all your cords? Do you wish you dealt with less of that frustrating tangled mess? Spider web of lies and evil strangling you until you're literally dead? Well, not anymore, thanks to Raycon wireless earbuds. You may ask, why choose Raycon earbuds? Well, to start, they start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. They also sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Raycons are great for working from home, working out, and listening to music and podcasts for hours without driving your roommates or family members crazy. Seriously guys, you know I love my Raycon earbuds. I mean, they've been sponsoring me for a while now. I use these things every single day. And the new Everyday E25s are their best yet with six hours of listen time, incredibly seamless Bluetooth pairing. All you gotta do is open them up and it's like connected. More bass and a great compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. So if you're interested in checking them out, which I highly recommend, please click the link down below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash Bobby Duke for 15% off your order. And now let's go back. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> okay. So finally, we're done with all of these and all the little little nuggets. Uh, now we need to dry them. We can throw them in the oven at like 180 degrees. This is dry, by the way, and we're gonna be working on it in just a second. So let's poop these in the oven and then we'll dust them with powdered sugar and they'll be ready to serve to your guests. Now let's move on to this guy. Ah! Okay, the next thing we're gonna do to our cute little virus is basically coat the entire surface in these slime balls. I think you add this to like, it's the kids are doing it. See the little bumps all over the place? The gray part, I just think I need to add some more texture. So the, the idea is, well, let me just show you. <laughs> I keep getting ahead of myself. That is actually impossible. Get ahead of yourself. All right, now that we have our balls in the bowl, let's paint some glue on here. <laughs> Just slather that glue on there. <laughs> do it like this, even though I don't know what I'm doing. Why do they spell manslaughter, man's laughter? It's not very funny. <laughs> now I'm gonna sploop it in here. Hopefully it all sticks to the thing. <gasps> I think that's working. That's like almost exactly what I was wanting. Off my hands. Now that we've done that half, we're gonna let it dry and then come back and do the other half. And we're back. Okay, it is the next day and the only way you know that is I'm wearing the exact same thing. That means that these are also dry. <laughs> they smell delicious. So we have our little triangle doohickeys and our rabbit turds all ready to go. Next step. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some holes into the back side of these. And I'm gonna use some toothpicks, poke them up in there. That way, not only will I have a spot for it to stick into something so I can spray paint it, then I'll be able to pull it out and then pop it in through the papier mache and glue it that way. So, you know, it makes sense in my head. We'll see if it actually works. Okay, let's just do it. Okay guys, well, this is done and I think it looks pretty good considering I just used a bunch of boxes, some glue, paints. It looks a lot like the pictures that you see floating around on the social meds, but you know, it looks like I got some on my hands. We should wash our hands with some soap.
And that is why you always use soap. <laughs> These are actually pretty good. Not really.